Hey, Jeff Ray here, President and CEO of Southland Regional Chamber, continuing our candidate conversations. We're down today with Kate Lee. Kate is a candidate for Southland Community School Corporation School Board District 1. Kate, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Kate, we uh, are doing these uh, to have our members uh, get to know our candidates a little better, so appreciate you taking some time to do that. If people don't know uh, anything about Kate Lee, tell us a little bit about who Kate Lee is. So, Kate Lee is from central Indiana, grew up there, moved to South Bend about 30 years ago. Um, since that time, I have had two children who have gone through South Bend schools, Madison, Hurley, LaSalle, and Adams. They're now both on to post-secondary adventures. Um, I work in the, at the South Bend Regional Chamber doing education and workforce. Um, and it means everything from manufacturing days to building trades week, health careers week, also interns, internship program for college students and continuing ed for adult workforce and incumbent workers. So lots of things in education and workforce and really have gotten involved in that over the years and oddly started in fundraising and healthcare and architecture, interior design. So I've kind of had like an interesting path to get to where I am today. Great. So, Kate, you mentioned uh, being involved uh, as a parent in your day job, too, and in terms of uh, workforce and education issues. Talk to us a little bit about the decision to run for school board and, and what made you uh, make that decision. So I've been in, as a parent, I got involved, um, started attending school board meetings. I've been a regular attendee over the years, not every school board meeting, but definitely paying attention and watching and listening and um, trying to see what's happening in the greater school corporation to understand the context of my kids' schools. Um, I also got involved early on when I, I first started, like kind of as the standard PTO parent, and then I found out about the stuff at Education Foundation. So got involved there and got involved with Career and Technical Education Advisory Council. So I feel like I have um, an interesting knowledge of it, which made me really want to dig in and kind of figure out how these pieces fit together and how can we make this a system. It's a great system with so many great things to offer, but it's kind of tricky to navigate. And how do we make it easier for parents and students to navigate the system as well as making it welcoming for all? And I think some of that is internal things. There can be um, a weird kind of conflict, I feel, between the board, administration, schools, and the, those who are actually doing the work in our schools because not everybody understands what everybody's doing because there's so much. So how can we make this better? And I just felt like now was the right time with my kids graduated to step up and see if I can make a difference in the over, setting the overall tone, helping with policy, those critical choices and budget because budget is also continues to be a huge challenge for our public schools. Great. Kate, just for um, more frame of reference, I mentioned you're running in District 1. Give us a feel generally about where District 1 is. Well, people will call it the Adams District, but with the way that students can select schools, I'm not sure if, I always say I'm not sure if I'm representing those who live in the Adams District or the schools that sit in the Adams District. But it's basically downtown South Bend, um, but on the um, east side of the river. So IUSB, Adams High School, out to McKinley, um, McKinley and Logan, that kind of corner, and then up north, anybody who's registered to vote at Notre Dame is also in District 1. So it's kind of that, and a, just a little sliver across the river um, between Portage and Riverside. So there's, it's an interesting district, but it makes sense if you look at it in context with the with how the districts used to feed to Adams High School. Let's talk a little bit about the role of a school board member. You mentioned you've, you've been, been to a lot of them, you've been involved, excuse me, before. Talk a little bit about what you see as the principal responsibilities of a school board member. So the school board members, the school board obviously is who selects a superintendent, select the superintendent, manage the superintendent, review the superintendent, and then I feel like support that superintendent, um, give them feedback as necessary to allow them to do their job, to hire their best cabinet, to hire the people who can really have the greatest impact on our students. Um, that you see that if you look at the how different districts are set up in different ways, but hiring the people and putting them in the roles to really empower our schools to do what's best for our students and our families. Um, addition, setting policy and the budget. Those are the oversight of policy and budget and making sure that I think the school board's job is to provide input back to the superintendent as well, what they're hearing from those uh, in their district or throughout the community and really get that kind of input and make sure that decisions that are being made that we're really seeing how they affect the entire school corporation and our community. 
Kate, you talked about you've been involved for many years as a parent and volunteer and in, in, in other capacities. Talk to us for a second a little bit about the state of public education. Um, you know, let's let's talk K through 12 publication, the general state of public education, and, and in, in particular here locally in Southland School. I'd say one really positive thing I think about public education right now, there are many positive things, but one thing is really acknowledging the importance of early childhood. So in South Bend schools, getting pre-K classes into our schools, allowing kids to start setting that foundation, because we've really seen this interesting acceleration of what we expect of kids when they get to school. Kindergarten is not what kindergarten used to be. Um, and I'm not, I, I'm not completely on board with that because I feel like brain development hasn't really changed, but our expectations of what students should be doing at what age has kind of changed. And there's a lot of pressure with standardized tests, with all the different things that are coming at our students and our educators. Uh, the expectations, if there, I, there's a chart that I have in my office that shows like what the expectations were of public schools like in the 1920s and what we expect now. And one of the biggest challenges is funding hasn't kept up with that. Students have more challenges, more options, more things to explore, but we don't have the, the funding to make everybody's wishes come true, right? Parents have expectations, community, business leaders, students, um, and we have to also be preparing them not just for maybe for your college, but also letting them students know that there's a wide variety of ways they can go after high school and that might be straight to work, but make and meeting all those different needs is both complex and expensive. So in public education, there's an expectation they will do all things for all students, but there's also this landscape in the state of Indiana where we have charters and vouchers and lots of options with this choice, which kind of destabilizes everything it makes. It can kind of delete the, the teacher pool. It causes um, students and families to shift around and really makes it much more challenging to navigate the system and build it in a way that is, is solid for everybody to navigate. I'm not even sure I answered that question. Yeah. I feel like no, I did, but it, there's, no, it's I so think, complex in my brain, I'm going, which things did I forget? No, no, I, th I think that's great. So Kate, talk a little bit about your, your school board campaign and, and say you get elected in November. Um, what what are Kate Lee's priorities um, when she becomes a member of the school board? So I, I feel strongly a, after navigating the school that um, communication is key. We um, as a community, like there's so much to communicate, it could sometimes be overwhelming. But I think we need to make sure that um, families and students understand what's available to them in South Bend schools. What are the the choices? I mean. Every, I mean, I grew up in a town where there were no choices. You went to North Elementary, South Elementary, Junior High, and High School, right? But we live in a town where you can pick your elementary school, your middle school, your high school. And so how do we help make that as easy as possible for students and families to navigate? How do we stabilize it and say, okay, I know that this is kind of where I'm going to go to elementary. And there's a, there's a feeder system that makes sense for families and communicate that in a way that makes sense. Also making sure like I, I'm continuously amazed by the people who don't even know that South Bend Schools offers career and technical education. There's all this amazing variety of classes that kids can take, preparing them for, you know, if they want to, if they think they might want to be a home builder, if they want to learn how to weld, there's um, culinary, um, healthcare, there's all these great internal pathways in South Bend Schools, but it's a lot to navigate so people don't know. So communication will be key. Um, internally between the schools and administration and the board and also externally with the community. Also, just making connections. I think getting the are getting our business leaders and community engaged with our schools and our students can really help the students see what they can be in our community after they graduate and also allows employers and community members who are interested in volunteering to see the, the huge potential in our schools and with our students. And finally, um, consistency to me is key. We have to figure out how we can quit. We start a lot of things and this is not just schools. This is like, I think this is just our world right now. Everything's new, everything's shiny. And it's like, how can we make, take the things that are working really well that we know work and double down on those and do them incredibly well for our kids to create that sense of stability and within our schools and for our educators and make it a little, how can we reduce the chaos of new and double down on what works. And I think that consistency is important for everybody right now. Great. Kate, what do you think the biggest challenge facing public schools is today? Just one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the biggest challenge, 
probably the biggest challenge is the constant change. I think there are things that come out from the, the state and federal government that there are mandates that come forward that aren't always funded. So you have to, you're constantly rearranging your budget. And maybe that is, maybe the fiscal challenge is the biggest. We need to take a look, I feel strongly, at what it really does cost to educate a student. We can base it on history, but everything has changed. And I'm not sure anybody has sat down and said, okay, so if we were gonna provide all these things that everybody expects within our public schools, um, if we were gonna do all the, the core classes, all the add-on classes, the six languages, the advanced AP, the IB, all the things that, student, that people expect, along with all the extracurriculars, because we expect sports, because we've always had that, right? We expect sports, and now we also have um, just an abundance of extracurricular clubs and great opportunities for kids, and I want them to have those opportunities, but they're not inexpensive, and it's really hard to get in this society where nearly everybody's at work that wants to work, finding volunteers to run that, it's not like it used to be. So how do we fund staffing and the facilities and all the things that we need to make sure that we are really meeting the expectations and the, the true needs of our students and our community. Great. Kate, I'm um, going to give ask you to put your sales hat on and give a quick elevator um, pitch. So if, you, if a family was um, thinking about coming and enrolling their kids into uh, South Bend schools, what would you tell them? I would tell them to dig in that there's a lot of information talk to other families find out you know who is going to which schools um really consider what the pathway for your students going to look like i love the idea of neighborhood schools uh, i like going to school heck, my kids going to school close to where we live um considering if that's going to work for you knowing that there are really great options within south bend schools and just get started and always be try to be engaged Try to be the parent who shows up and is involved on behalf of your child and all the children and really advocate for those educators who are working hard with your kids every day um, for your student, but also just for the greater good of our schools and our community. Great. One more, uh, why, you, why you got your sales hat on one last thing. So uh, uh, as people are deciding uh, to vote in District 1 for school board, tell them why they should vote for Kate Lee. Well, they should vote for Kate Lee because my opponent did withdraw and endorse me. So um, I always said it'd be embarrassing if she won after she withdrew and endorsed me. But um, I, I really do have our children's and educators' best interests in mind. I have learned a lot over the years that I hope to bring to the conversation at the school board level and really have a positive impact on our students, our educators, and the greater community. Great. She's Kate Lee, District 1 candidate, Southland Community School Corporation. Kate, thanks for sitting down with us today. Thank you.